Hi everyone. First of September today. Wow. Where where has this year gone? You know, it's all gone so quickly and strangely and we're heading towards autumn and then winter and then obviously there'll be spring and summer again and so it continues. And how are you doing in all of this? Um I thought I'd begin today with a blessing. And this one is from number 6 verses 24 to 26. It's a very familiar one I hope. And uh, here you are. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And let's just focus and think about one word in that blessing. Peace. Peace is what we need, isn't it? It's what keeps our minds settled during uncertainty. It's what helps us to maintain hope. It's what gives us the strength to speak into distress and disorder. Peace. How, how peaceful are you right now? How peaceful, how peaceful is your mind? Is there chaos and mess going on internally that others just don't know about? Is, are you surrounded by a very um, chaotic life? How's your work situation? How peaceful are you right now? What are your concerns and worries about this life? The word used mostly in the Old Testament, translated as peace, in our language, is one you've probably heard of before. It is shalom. It means peace, yeah? But it's so much more than that. It's so, so much broader and wider and deeper. It means completeness, soundness, welfare, wholeness, harmony, fulfilment, security, and of course, peace. All of that wonderful meaning is contained and, and wrapped up in that simple word, shalom. It is the peace of God, and it is the peace that he gives. In the New Testament, there's a wonderful verse in John 14, and it's, it's verse 27, and it says this, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Again, the Greek word for peace here has similar meaning. It's not quite as extensive as the Hebrew one, but in his conversation, it's very likely that Jesus actually used the, the Hebrew or Aramaic word, which means the same thing. And again, it's something given to us by God. Jesus says, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. But when Jesus is talking to his disciples about peace in this way, it's part of a much bigger dialogue, and it's part of chapters, um, part of the chapters uh, fourteen to sixteen in the Gospel of John. So, if you want to have a read of those chapters, chapters fourteen to sixteen in John, and you'll find it contains a whole lot of stuff. And during these chapters, he tells them he's going away, he's going to leave his disciples, and that they will suffer grief. But he promises the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, Helper and Counselor. Yet they will have troubles and will be hated. But the Spirit will guide them into all truth and their grief will turn to joy. And so at the end of this uh, dialogue containing all of this stuff, 
Jesus says this in chapter 16 and verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. You will have trouble in this world, but in Christ there is peace in him. It's not an easy ride being promised to you. It's not freedom from the storm, nor is it about feeling nice. It's about something much deeper and more profound than these things. It's a peace that causes us to be firmly anchored to our Lord, no matter what the world looks like around us and no matter what chaos is going on inside our heads. It enables us to have that quiet, confident trust in him. So I guess the question now is, well, how can we access this peace? Or how can I have this peace that you're talking about, Dave? I mean, we know that God gives it, but why is it that I don't have it right now? Well, firstly, know this. Know Jesus. Know the Prince of Peace himself, as it all comes from him. And then abide or remain in him. Come to Christ. For those of you that like doing stuff, maybe some verses in Philippians can help as well. These are from Philippians 4, uh, verses 4 to 7 to start with. It says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice! Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with, san with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, simply not being anxious may not be seen as a helpful statement to those who, who suffer with anxiety. But there is some helpful stuff here that, that, that might be useful. So, so do listen. In every situation, pray. Give thanks to God in every situation. Present your requests to God rather than worry about them. Be grateful and thankful and bring it all to Jesus. In doing this, you will have peace. And it doesn't stop there. Paul the writer continues by adding a helpful way of thinking about it, which can help with peace bringing to our minds. As well as thinking about once we're at peace, what can we, what does it look like and outworking wise? So uh, verse 8 of Philippians 4 continues. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Dwell on this stuff. Consider it. When there's things going through your mind which aren't good, Think about the other stuff. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. So I hope this has been at least a little helpful to you if you're struggling to find peace in these times. And as I started with a blessing in the Old Testament, so I'm going to finish with a short one from the New Testament. And this is taken from 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 16. So now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. Amen.